we're back. And this week on Close Talkers, we watched Season 6, Episode 15, The Beard. <laughs> Hello, Katie. Hello, Derek. Are you all recovered from episode 100? I don't think I'll ever truly recover. Some weird and wild stuff. I'm just embarrassed because we put a lot of work into making it work ahead of time, and it did not show through at all. Uh huh. <laughs> just a couple of kids just goofing around in the doing basement. Doing it on the fly. Yeah. Anyway, we're, we're back to normal. How did you like the beard? I guess I liked it. I laughed a bit, and I wasn't writing for a whole bunch of it, so I think mm. I was just watching and enjoying it. Also, maybe because it was a little bit predictable. Did you like it? It was fine. Yeah. yeah. The Beard was written by Carol Leifer. Mm. It was directed by Andy Ackerman, and it aired on February 9th, 1995. Vulture.com ranked it as the 59 best Seinfeld episode. I didn't know what you were doing. <laughs> Try to yawn quietly. And Screen Crush ranked it as the 62nd. So like mm. pretty much like right in agreement. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd agree with those two. Uh, Vulture cited that uh, Elaine's storyline did not age well, but uh, Jerry trying to hide his love of Melrose Place was great. Also, George and a toupee. Was no the, comment. Just no comment. George and a toupee. They wrote it one time and then they wrote it again in all caps. <laughs> well- I mean, Kramer thinks he's attractive. Screen Crush pretty much just cited the scene where Elaine throws George's toupee out the window. Mm. I think this had highs and lows. Mm -hmm. Throwing the toupee out the window, high. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Pretty much anything with Kramer, low. Elaine trying to win a gay man over to her team, also low. Mm. Why don't you read the synopsis from Netflix? Hmm. Elaine falls for a gay man. Jerry tries to prove that he doesn't watch Melrose Place. George dates a bald woman. Kramer gets paid to be in police lineups. I think Kramer fighting with a homeless man is a more prominent storyline than uh, him standing in police lineups. Yeah. Maybe they thought highlighting that was not politically correct. Mm. Who are the guest stars? Well, I was going to start with Robert, but why don't I jump right down to uh, John Grise? Grease, hmm? uh, who played homeless guy, he was in Napoleon Dynamite, Men in Black, and Get Shorty. Oh wow! He was Uncle Rico in Napoleon Dynamite. What? Wow! Do you think Uncle Rico looks like our neighbor? No, but I did think that the in Seinfeld he looked a little bit like our neighbor. I don't. I don't really see it. Maybe the teeth. That's not what I was thinking of. I could see the teeth. Maybe. <laughs> Okay, who else is in this episode? Robert Mailhouse played Robert. He was in Days of Our Lives, Easy to Assemble, and How to Make Love Like an Englishman. <laughs> Catherine Lanasa played Kathy Tierney. She was in Campaign, Truth Be Told, and Imposters. Are they just naming the characters after the actors now? Close. And uh, Joan Sheckle played Denise. Uh, she didn't have too many acting roles. She was mostly like involved in production, listed as things such as additional crew and or script and continuity department. Hmm. Um, but she worked on Transparent, Whale Rider, and Little Miss Sunshine. Oh, wow. Do you think she's actually bald? Mm, no. Because when she had the hat on, there really wasn't hair showing around the bottom. No. Maybe she had a buzz or something. Mm. Um. And I'm disappointed we didn't get to see her mm -hmm. because I wanted to know if she was like, like shiny bald or like mm. buzz bald. Or like losing hair bald. Well, that's what I wrote down. Is she balding? Mm. Like George? Does she have mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the side hair? Hanging on to the last remnants of a once great society? I think my guess is that. If she had alopecia or was balding, she would have shaved it all off mm -hmm. because women are more sensible than men. Mm. Do we do anything else? The paper's right there. Um, sort of back to last week where you asked what I remembered about this episode. 
No idea. So how'd you do? I think I nailed it. I don't think so. I said Elaine dates a, uh, a homosexual. Did you, though? I did. So, I, I guess the tie-in with the stand-up to the episode is that Jerry talks about wanted posters at the post office. Yeah, is there one? Police sketch artist. Oh, yeah. There you go. But he's he's talking about ones where they have a photograph. Like, mm-hmm. this is them head on, and this is them leaving mm-hmm. to the side. It was kind of a... A bad stand-up. When you worked at Customs, did they give you pictures of people, or was it just, like, information about people to look out for? I would say it was 99% just information about people. Mm. I probably saw one photo. Mm -hmm. So Jerry and Elaine are eating Chinese food, and he tells her, you're bad with the sticks. Just get a fork. She says, yeah, I need a lesson. I need an eating lesson. And then when George buzzes in, he goes, get on with your bad self. He does. I want to go back to this. And I think that um, white people, when they're eating Asian food, will overuse chopsticks. Really? Yeah. What do you mean? I think there's, like, when Asian people are eating, like, fried rice, they'll use a spoon. (laughs) And white people will be like, ooh, I'm eating fried rice, but use the chopsticks. Well, if you can, if you're eating with chopsticks already, and you can eat rice with chopsticks, why wouldn't you? It's more efficient to use a spoon. Sure, but what if you didn't get one? Who doesn't get a spoon? Who doesn't have a spoon? You have spoons. What if you're out? (laughs) What if you're out and they don't provide you a spoon? You gonna ask for one? Yeah, chopsticks and spoon is like the yeah the optimal configuration. They they emerged at the same time Mm -hmm. in Asia, long before fork emerged. So. Yeah, they go together. Mm. I, I'm not. I I'm not by. arguing against spoon. I'm just saying, if you can, why wouldn't you shovel rice into your mouth with chopsticks? I'm saying what I have observed is. Mm. You mean when you're watching me eat? No, no, no. When I'm, <laughs> like I'm saying, Asian people will be like, "Oh, it's much more easier to use a spoon when eating this food." If I just food. make rice with stuff. Mm-hmm. Then I will take a spoon. Mm-hmm. I won't start with chopsticks. Mm-hmm. But if there are other things for which you would use chopsticks, you go I, out to a Chinese food restaurant. Are you? Are you a Chinese restaurant or a Chinese food restaurant? You got mad at me for saying Chinese food restaurant. <laughs> I did because it's funny because you don't say like Greek food restaurant. That's what it's called, though. <laughs> go on, I, I cut you off. So Lane's got ballet tickets with her. This seems like a convoluted relationship. A friend of a friend works with a guy, something yeah. like why why bother? Why couldn't it be her friend or yeah, or a friend of a friend? But it was like a third Right, because she well, she doesn't have a job, right? She just still works for Mr. Pitt. That is her job. Well, I mean, she doesn't have coworkers. It's just mm. her and Mr. Pitt. So she can't it can't be like this guy from my office mm. asked me to be his beard. Right, mm-hmm. so we've got to we've got to put middle people in here. But they put two middle people. I whatever, it's convoluted. <sighs> mm. I thought the people sitting behind them in the box were his parents. Oh yeah, because they were a bit older, and they're like, "So you're going out with Robert?" They're just they're just assuming he's gay and they're surprised that he's with a woman. But because they were a little bit older and and. I, w- I thought the, the twist was going to be like, we know he's gay and it, we're fine with it. Mm. So what are you doing here? <laughs> I think that would have been funny. Well, I think that's kind of like an unfinished storyline. Obviously, his boss and like the word around the office is that he's gay. Mm. So if they think that already, is it just well, she him does- thinking that – the company is too conservative and he would be fine if he did come out. No, I think he says something about the boss in particular. Mm. The boss gave him tickets to invite his wife. Like that, that Mm. I think the problem is with the boss. Well, that was his boss. That was his boss. Yeah. Oh, I didn't get that. I thought it was his parents. They didn't make it clear. So then why are they surprised? Was he setting him up? Did he want him to bring a man and then he could be, aha. Like it doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Homophobia does not make sense. No. 
So George comes in with his toupee and Kramer asserts that, you know, he's an attractive man. I never realized what an attractive man he is. Yeah. Kramer and I agree on something. With my looks and personality, I'm in the game. (laughs) I no longer defer to the quaffed. I am a player. Do you think that toupee looks good? No, I think it actually looked better the last time he wore it. I think it looked better in the scofflaw. It was messier? I think the color was better, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. This looked very poofy, very full, like unrealistically full and poofy and uniform in color. Maybe he took it swimming. Mm. Well, Lane just ripped it off. I Mm. mean, he couldn't have had very good tape on there. Yeah. But I did think later on, when it was off, his forehead looked a little red. So, I don't know, like, do you have production notes? Like, was it actually taped to his head and actually ripped off? I don't. I imagine they used something like spirit glue or whatever, right? Like, it wasn't it wasn't a toupee quality. No, adhesive. but something was ripped off his head. <laughs> we use toupee quality adhesives. <laughs> it, it, it lasts for three weeks. Mm-hmm. And so... Uh, Kramer thinks that he's attractive enough that he can, you know, pass him on to Kramer's maybe former lover. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he doesn't have a picture, so they're going to go down to the composite artist. Mm-hmm. Do you think they still have composite artists? Yes. You don't think, like, they just mid-journey? Uh... <laughs> uh, well, I watch a lot of Forensic Files, and I know that is a l- very old show. I was going to say, <laughs> I watched a lot of Forensic Files. So in 1980, they had, friends, they had composite artists. No, but there is a a skill and an art mm. to taking somebody's description mm-hmm. and making a realistic portrait from it. Mm-hmm. And there's science, there's like, there's, there's skin thickness mm. and distance and measurements and averages and stuff and like... I mean, I don't know. Maybe a computer could do a decent enough job, but I I think there are still mm. composite artists. I, I follow one on Instagram. There are. Maybe we should. Maybe you. Okay, here's the thing. We're gonna. We, you can maybe cut this out if you want, but whatever. Maybe you mm-hmm. should feed a description of me into Mid Journey and see what it says to see if you can get an accurate. I'll just say that guy from. Mad Men. Ah, yeah. Paul Nice. Paul Bethany? I can't remember. I can't remember his name. Who would you tell Mid Journey to make me? What's her name? <clears throat> yep, that'll that'll do. I just don't know celebrities' names. <laughs> Out with it. I want to know whether I should be offended or not. I would say uh Kate Blanchett with more angular features. More angular than Kate Blanchett? I think your her nose is has a rounder. Um, I do tip. have a pointy nose. Okay, fine, I'll take it. So I don't know if this is jumping ahead, but this is the next thing I wrote. Kramer goes, "Oh, are you finished with all this? I'm going to give it to a homeless guy about the Chinese food." Mm-hmm. And then they're walking to the station. It must be the next thing that happens. They're walking to the precinct. And they pass a homeless guy, and he hands him a Tupperware with a spoon. Mm-hmm. It's like, here you go, some food. And the guy's like, oh, thank you so much. And he goes, you're going to be here in an hour? It's like, where am I going to go? And we don't know why he says that. And uh, then he comes back. He's like, uh, okay, where's my Tupperware? Mm-hmm. And the guy's like, you gave it to me. And then they get into an argument. He's like, that wasn't part of the deal. And he leaves. So later on, Jerry's in his apartment, and Kramer comes in. He's like, do you have any Tupperware? No. I made a casserole. Now it's going to go bad. I got nothing to put it in. And Jerry recommends a plastic bag. hmm <laughs> Casserole in a bag, Jerry? He means put the whole tray into, like, a bag. Mm. You, you've seen that before. He doesn't mean scoop the casserole out of the pan. <laughs> That's what I'm picturing. Oh, my God. Just slide it into a Ziploc and... I clearly understood what Jerry was suggesting. I, I'm, J- the, Jerry's a bachelor. He's like, I'll just throw a plastic bag over this pan. He just he would just the throw the pan in the fridge with the lid on it. That's what I'll eat for the next five days. The same meal. I should make casserole. It's casserole weather. Casserole usually has pasta in it. You don't want pasta. I remember commercials for when Ziploc came out with 
containers. Mm. And they're like, are you having to chase down your Tupperware? Buy this stuff. You can just throw it in the trash. <laughs> and uh, they're, they're very useful for that reason. You're not sad when one of those goes missing. You know what I am sad with is when I can't find a lid for the container that I put the food into. <laughs> That's why you have to find both at the same time. You have to confirm there's a lid that goes with it. We did buy like very similarly sized different brand containers that are both like clear bottoms, translucent blue lids. The lids are incompatible. So I'll often like. Well, this is a you problem. You've got the wrong lid out. You gotta know who bought the who bought the, the the second brand lids. I'm a I'm a I'm a Ziploc uh, disposable Tupperware man, and and Glad just you know is a trash container. Yep. It doesn't have the the the, the patented burp. <laughs> it doesn't. It, the lid is too rigid. Okay, this is off topic, but Jerry has a very 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 black lamp. Did you notice this? Didn't notice his lamp. I noticed his ridiculously puffy shirt. Which one? I mean, they're all puffy. Blue one. Yeah. But it wasn't as puffy as some, because I, I didn't write it down. But he's got a table lamp with a white shade and a black base. And the it's such a matte black. It's like mm. Vanta black. Matte black, all the things. Did you know that uh, the... British lab they came up with, like the Black is Black, exclusively licensed one artist to use it mm. in his art. Anish Kapoor. I didn't know that. Uh, no one else can use this color. And so this other British artist created an even blacker black, and he sells it to everyone except Anish Kapoor. Mm. And you have to swear when you're on the website. You won't give it to Anish Kapoor. You're not Anish Kapoor, and you won't give it to Anish Kapoor. Fair. And it costs like $60 for a tiny tube. Mm. He's not giving it away for free to put. To flood the market with uh, Ultra Black? No, he makes $60 for a tiny tube. Mm. So what do you make of this Elaine um, beard storyline? One, do you think it aged well? Two, do you think it's funny? Three, do you think it's believable? Four is another number? Uh, I don't think it aged as poorly as probably the websites said, mm. like, I think it's handled, you know, it, it doesn't, I don't think it insults gay people, does it? The only thing that I think is a little bit insulting, maybe the, there's two things. When Jerry's like, how did you do it? She's like, I'm a woman. Yeah. And then when he goes back, she's like, well, if I had, if I was better at sex, he would have stayed. Mm-hmm. Which kind of diminishes uh, people's sure. emotional yeah 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 sexuality. yeah. But it is a TV show. Yes. Um. So I I don't know. I don't actually think it aged that poorly. Hmm. Uh, you know they're not making fun of him. They're not. They're saying like you know that it's not like you just choose like you. Hmm. That's that's your team. Like hmm. you're pretty dedicated to the team, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. It What bothered me was that it was a little bit boring. Sure, yeah. So, I mean, there's a couple of, like, things here and there. Uh, when George is talking on the phone with uh, Denise, mm -hmm. Jerry asks if he described his looks and whether he told him the truth. He goes, I told her the truth. As you see it? Yeah. What about your little uh, hat there? Your uh, hair hat. <laughs> I did laugh a lot when Elaine got frustrated and screamed through her hands in George's face, you're bald. I don't like this thing. I mean, that was, was peak Elaine. It was that's, pretty good. I, th I think that's the apex of this yeah. episode. There's the famous, it's not a lie if you believe it. Mm-hmm. What do you think about uh, Jerry lying about Melrose Place? Actually, that was probably the funniest during the polygraph when, yeah, I mean, I don't know these people's names because I didn't watch Melrose Place, but they ask, you know, did so-and-so sleep with Michael? And he's like, 
you just can't take it anymore. Mm-hmm. He's like, yes, why did she do that? And he freaks out and he's pulling off the electrodes and the thing and walking out of the police station. I don't know how much of Melrose Place I watched. I know I watched some because really? it was, yeah, it was in the same universe as 90210, I it, think. Is it? I don't know, which I Except also was didn't like, watch. It was an apartment complex, so it wasn't like kids in high uh-huh. school. It was like. But it, they were in the same universe? I think so. Oh. Um, And they aired very recently, like very close together, like maybe back to back, if I'm remembering correctly. I don't know. Um, so I did watch some of it. Couldn't tell you a single character's name. Couldn't tell you a single storyline. Is there ice pick sta- icicle stabbing in Melrose Place? <sighs> no idea. I think so. I think someone stabs someone else with an icicle. Mm. And then the murder weapon is gone because mm. it melts. Mm-hmm. But I think I know that from community. <laughs> like, I know I didn't watch it. Yam boiling is the <laughs> icicle stabbing. Yes. That's exactly it. I I wondered, so we're basically left to believe that the police officer doesn't go out with Jerry. Correct. Why wouldn't she just find, I mean, I think the actress does find it funny and is turning her head to not mm. laugh when Jerry freaks out and leaves. But why wouldn't she just find it funny and then be like, okay, we went through all that. You watch Melrose Place. Like, let's, hmm. you know. Well, I don't think they've gone out on a date yet oh so you're starting off not even having gone out on a date and he's like lying about Mm. something as seemingly meaningless as liking a television show was melrose place a chick show is that why he's embarrassed i mean i think it would i think their demographic would skew to women but i mean it's like was the oc a chick show is uh I'm trying to think of like a modern day equivalent. I don't think they do these kind of shows anymore, or at least I'm not aware of them. I don't know. Um, is like Love Island a chick show? Kind of, yes. I think. Well, reality, reality dating season. shows are are marketed to women. Yeah. But I think the most rabid Bachelor fans I know are men. <laughs> so. But what team do they play for? <laughs> Of course, I loved when Elaine called Jerry Jerome. Mm-hmm. Did you notice where when like Jerry says like how did how how did you do it and Elaine like lifts her arms over her head and swings her hips and she's like because I'm a woman. Jerry is like his his gaze is is directly downward. <laughs> no, I didn't notice. <laughs> I mean, she is shorter than him. It's lower than that. There's another awkward George close up. Oh, ooh, to hide the, um, like, to show his reaction for yeah. when she takes off her hat. I wonder, I think it's exaggerated by the the Netflix edit. Oh, okay. He's even, he's even bigger on the screen. Yeah. Because they did it with the roommate who looks like him. Yeah. I think, in my mind, you see her from behind. Oh. But I could be just Mandela affecting myself. So we should talk about the Bald- Mandela, the Mandela effect. No, I heard you go on and on about it this weekend. Um, <laughs> I've had enough uh, about Bald Woman. About how I thought we had gone to a place that was like bald is beautiful for for women, and then we have the Chris Rock, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith mm. kerfuffle. Yeah, sure. Which. A podcast I listen to, they are still talking about it as like the cultural event of the century. I recently saw, I, I, I recently saw it. I don't know how recent it happened after the Oscars a year ago, two years ago, whenever it was. I think it was two years ago. Um, it was an interview with Mel Gibson and like him being very like he's deranged Mm -hmm. but the interviewer asked like what he would have done if he was in will smith's shoes and like a publicist mel gibson's publicist comes in and like stops the interview whoa oh wow so like he's not gonna work again right i don't i mean i don't know yikes i mean there's so many people that would be like oh their career's over but Seemingly, that's not. I think 
I think anybody looks good bald if they if they own it. Like George keeping the fluffiness around the side of his head does not look good. Uh I think the fluffiness around Jason Alexander, like on the sides and back, is fine. It's the weird wispies puff over top. Yeah. That's like uh like a headphone strap strap um but no you, you just gotta take it all off i don't know do you remember when i used to buzz my hair yeah i look back at those and i'm like ooh, that was a bad look really i think you yeah. look good no i think the last time i did it i specifically said to you don't let me do this to myself again <laughs> uh when we started dating you buzzed your hair before you went to a wedding and you have a very attractive picture of you with no hair in a suit. And, I mean, that's all the evidence I need. I don't think I've ever seen this picture. Maybe you just need to wear a suit. Mm. Listen. I don't think that will hide my hair. So I once pretty much buzzed my hair. Yeah, you told me about this. And no pictures survive because I have a weird head. And Did, I, So you're saying you didn't own it? I didn't own it. It didn't work mm. for me, but I recognized that it didn't work for me. Mm. My head needs hair. And like even even a pixie cut is fine. Like it just mm. it's got to be it's got to be covered and hidden. Mm. Cuz of this weird dent over here. <laughs> but it didn't work for me. But when it does work for someone and they know it, it, it shows. Like mm. they look great, man or woman. I think it depends on the shape of the head mostly. The more spherical your head, the better off it is. I mean, Michael Jordan has a very pointed head. But like, but oh, I, I think his head it is very spherical. No, it goes like it's got a cone at the top. Nah. I'm Google pictures of Michael Jordan. This podcast. It's like a dome. Not a big dome, eh? It's like uh, Sistine's Chapel. On the outside. It's got a point. This one. That's just because the the way the person edited that picture. Look at the picture where it it's like just a photograph unedited. That's from That's the a, side. That is a full. Look at this one. That one's that one's not. It's a full three hundred and sixty degrees. How come in my brain math, right like, away I was like Michael Jordan has a pointy head. Mandela effect. <laughs> oh my god! Can we finish this episode? Because that's all I have. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I have other notes that we haven't talked about, but whatever. No, oh, please go. No, nah, give me the Larry Fine. Um, mm. I don't know what that means. Who Larry is? You don't know who Larry Fine is? No, the Three Stooges. Oh, Larry. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> with with the the yeah, hair yeah, on the side, the, sides, yeah. the one you think would be called curly, but he's not. Sure. Yeah. When Jerry suggests that he can like maybe beat the machine, and Elaine just scoffs and says, "Who do you think you are, Costanza?" Yeah. So we have no corrections, no notes from the live show. I I have notes, but I can't remember what they are. So we have none. Okay, fine. Next up is the kiss hello. Mm-hmm. Do you remember this? Jerry's had it with the kiss hello. You know, if he could squeeze a breast when it happens, it's one thing. But just you know. So he he ends the kiss hello mm. and suffers the consequences. Okay. Well, bye. Bye. Believe it or not, this is our podcast. Please subscribe at the end. If you subscribed, we would be happy. Please subscribe to us. Believe it or not, it's our podcast. Is that a Seinfeld reference?